Welcome to yet a different area of the house, one with uh, a lot of old computers. And maybe someday we'll go into detail and take a look at these a little closer. But if you remember in the last episode, we actually went out to the mill and we cut out our two circuit boards. The only thing left for these now is to put components on them, solder them up, plug them into the calculator, and see how they work. So let's get to it. And here we have the hexadecimal relay calculator and it is ready for the two new boards that we just soldered up to be installed. But first things first, let's make sure that it still operates uh, correctly. So we'll just do a quick operation on it. We'll say uh, three plus five and that is equal to eight. All right. Now 
let's get this back to zero. So to do that, I'm just gonna do a zero plus zero equals zero. All right, so now that we know that in both the Mike register and the November register, we have uh, zero, zero, zero saved. So let's go ahead and pull out these two SRAM boards. And we'll go ahead and put in our diagnostic board in the back row here. And we'll put our reset board here in the next row in front of it. Now, nothing is illuminating on the board because, well, there's nothing happening in the calculator right now. But let's see what happened if we push a button. So let's push number three here. All right, it lit up. We saw something happen there. That's good news. All right, so if I push number three, you'll see that this light here flashes momentarily. All right, and that is the uh, mic register write signal. So we know that it's writing to the mic register whenever that light is illuminated. Now these four on the right here are showing us the bus in binary. So pushing three illuminates the two LEDs on the far right. So that's 0011, which is three in binary. All right, so we know that we had three in binary on the bus here, and it wrote it to the mic register there. Now, if I hit the plus, I see the little light over here lit up to let me know that we were doing an addition command. Now the November register is selected. So if I hit another button, let's say five, we saw a different light light up this time right here. That's letting us know that we're writing to the November register. And if we look at the bus, we've got 0101, which is five in binary. So now if I hit equals, all right, you saw that we had two lights light up right here and here. All right, this light is our ALU output enable. So what that's doing is it's letting whatever the addition is that's being done by our arithmetic unit here, it's allowing that to be put onto the bus and be written into our display register right up here. Now, what is on the bus? Well, you see there's just one light lit up here, which is 1000, which happens to be the number eight in binary. All right. So, so far, our diagnostic board seems to be working really well. well. Let's go ahead and flip this little switch off and see if that turns all the lights off. Yep, nothing's lighting up, so that switch is working correctly. Our diagnostic board is doing what it's supposed to do. All right, so we'll do another operation. We'll say uh, 9 plus 1, and that should equal. 10, and 10 happens to be A in hexadecimal. So if I hit equals again, we should see eight and two illuminate here, eight and two. All right, so now I've got A sitting here, and that's saved in our display register here, but that also means that we had nine saved in our mic register and one saved in the November register. And those two numbers are actually still currently saved in there, which is why whenever I hit equals, it still writes whatever the additions being done by the arithmetic unit into the display register because, you know, this is still got eight stored in it. This still has one stored in it. So this is still doing the addition on that. And whenever I hit equals, it puts it onto the bus and this saves it. So our little white button here should clear out both the mic register and the November register. So that way this is now doing zero plus zero. So let's push that and see what happens here. Oh, look at that. You can see that we have two lights lit up here, which is the uh, mic register right and the November register right. So both of these are now writing whatever's on the bus. And you can see that none of the lights are lit up on the bus over here. So that's, uh, that, that's writing zero to zero and zero to both of these. So if I hit equals there, you can see we get zero displayed right here. So there we go. That worked out. That worked out just perfectly. Now, whenever we press this little white button, we see an extra light light up over here, and that's our addition light. And what happens is when the addition is lit up, it should cancel the latch over here for the subtraction operation. So let's try a subtraction operation and see what happens. So we'll do uh, nine, and then we'll do minus. And if you look at that, we actually have uh, two lights staying illuminated here. One is our subtraction 
light here, that's showing us that we're doing a subtraction uh, operation. And then the other light here is the light for this LED here. That's letting me know that this LED is lit up. So th this little dash and this light are, are doing the same thing. And then if we do nine minus, say five there, that equals four, so we did the subtraction correctly, but we still have our, our minus lit up here, and there's still numbers saved up here, and this latch is still kicked on. So hopefully, when we press this little white button, it should clear this out and put zero and zero into there. So let's try that. Well, that's that, that kicked off our minus thing. That's good, and if I hit equals, zero. All right, so it looks like everything is working exactly as we planned. And that's awesome. I'm really happy with how this turned out. But there is still one problem with it. And that is when you do an addition that goes to something higher than the number 15. So for example, F is 15. You can see that we have all four lights on our uh, bus illuminated here to denote that that's 15. And then if we do that plus any other number, we'll say F plus five, that'll be 20. Well, you can see here we're displaying the second number that we're going to add, but we're already showing a carry bit over here. And that's what this is, is showing a carry bit. And well, that's, that's not good. Uh, but if we hit equal, we can see now that we get the appropriate answer, which is, which is one and four. So that's going to be uh, 16. And then that is four, 16 plus four is 20. So we got the right answer. Uh, but our carry bit is still illuminated here. And if I try to do another operation, this carry bit's gonna stay illuminated and that's gonna get a little confusing. So this little white button should clear that out. There we go. And now we have zero and zero in there. Now the reason that when we do that, that this illuminates, is because as I said, the arithmetic unit is always doing the math that's in these two registers here, the mic register and the November register. We only output the answer of the arithmetic unit whenever we hit the equal button and we light up that arithmetic unit enable pin except when there's a carry bit. The carry bit is directly connected to this LED. And that's why it illuminates whenever there's a carry in here. That's why it illuminates too early and that's why it stays illuminated uh, too long afterwards. So this, this little white clear button here really helps bring everything back to zero and makes operation a lot easier. And I'm actually really happy with how this hexadecimal relay calculator turned out. It, works really well. It seems to not have any bugs. The diagnostic board is displaying cool blinking lights and we have uh, kind of a roundabout clear, but we have a way to clear it out and get on with the next operation. And it taught me a whole lot about computing on a fundamental level. So I think that I'm going to wrap up this series about the hexadecimal calculator and about the relay calculators in general. I'm pretty happy with where they're at and I'm happy with what I've learned, but I think it's time to take that knowledge and apply it towards a slightly older technology, a different technology. Uh, maybe say something with vacuum tubes, all right? So uh, stick around, even though this series is over, we have lots of projects that I'm going through and I would love to share them with you guys. And uh, vacuum tubes are gonna play a big role in the upcoming project. So if you're interested in vacuum tubes, stick around and uh, we'll get into those next time.